Let's talk with global affairs analyst Sam Fate, who is in New York. He joins me via Skype to discuss uh, this development. Thank you very much, Mr. Fate, for joining in at this time. What for you is the significance of this agreement? Well, what is important here is how this is going to change the entire Middle East crisis. I mean, it, that is, it's showing that more and more there is a need for a diplomatic approach that the Palestinian Authority needs to get on board on. Now, of course, the Palestinian Authority will see this as a betrayal for their fight uh, uh, for their own state. However, the Arab nations, other Arab nations like the UAE too, are trying to strengthen their military. They need to build certain kind of relations with the United States. And under the Trump administration, building those relationships comes with certain strings attached. Mind you, the UAE was trying to get some F-16 fighter jets from the United States. They tried to build up their defense. This could have been one of the conditions in order to get those sales through. I think those sales just went through yesterday um, uh, when this was actually done. Now, of course, there are other um, states like um, Oman that many feel and, uh, that they are going to come on board as well. So again, this is just telling the Palestinian Authority that they need to also use a diplomatic approach, not just a guerrilla warfare in terms of securing their own state. Now, it depends on how the Arab League and Arab nations want to play this out. The question is, will they be able to bind together and use these new diplomatic relations they have with Israel right. in order to stop the, the resettlement uh, in the Gaza Strip? Especially since uh, the Palestinian uh, leader, uh, Hassan Rouhani, calls this or implies this is a betrayal and has promised severe consequences for the UAE and Bahrain. Well, you know, again, they would, if they see another two or three Arab nations go ahead and join this uh, new, uh, new way of dealing with Israel, they don't have a choice. They may have to come on board. Of course, personally, do I understand what the Palestinian, Palestinians are going through and their struggle? Absolutely. And we must all make sure that they are able to get their state. But should they use a diplomatic approach here is going to be the question. And how do they want to use that? They must engage other Arab nations including the UAE, they cannot leave them on the sidelines, including Bahrain or even Oman and Egypt. Egypt was in the forefront of the, police, of, of, the war with, of the Arab war with Israel in the first place. So if they were able to build a diplomatic relations with Israel, then the other countries will not see why they would continue to, to, uh, to, take, to take in a path that you know have never provided a solution. They want to change the tactic. They can use a diplomatic tactic to ensure that the resettle, Israeli resettlements in, Palesti in Palestinian areas stop and to ensure that some of the land is given back and gradually and hopefully Palestinians can build their own state as well. I think the United Nations must come in here. Are they going to achieve where the, the, the UN borders that were set in the 1950s, are they going to achieve that completely? I don't think so. But could they regain back a large chunk of it through diplomatic means? I believe so. Sam Fateh, thanks a lot for your contributions.